Death is the end of the line, bar none, end of the road. At least for us humans. Today we're going to be taking a look at 10 creatures that can live after death though. Number one is a creature that is said to be able to survive in a nuclear blast, so stay tuned to find out what that is. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Number 10. Flatworms. Are you familiar with the belief about how earthworms reproduce? It says that if you cut an earthworm in half, two earthworms will form from the severed halves. Of course, this has since been proven to be complete hogwash. However, substitute the earthworm with a flatworm, then this old wives' tale suddenly becomes a true story. Flatworms, or planarians, are known as masters of regeneration. They can rebuild any part of their bodies after amputation. If one is cut in half, the head portion grows a tail and the tail portion grows a head. Cut it into 20 pieces and 20 new worms, each an exact copy of the first, are created. This has been exploited by Nottingham University scientists who have created a colony of more than 20,000 worms, all from one original whose bodies and organs do not appear to age. They are confident a single worm which did not divide would live forever, unless it catches an infection or another illness. Number 9. Flies. You've probably seen David Blaine magic tricks when he resurrects dead flies just by touching them, and no, this is not because the magician really has supernatural powers. Flies can survive freezing temperatures and go into some kind of suspended animation. What you really see David doing is thawing the frozen fly using the heat radiating from his hands and his warm breath. When the fly fully thaws, it then flies away. But this amazing ability to survive freezing temperatures is not why the humble fly makes it to this list. Female flies will live for several days after they have been decapitated. Such beheaded females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly and can and do engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and under duress, walking. Everything a normal fly does, except for eating of course. Even more amazingly, males will court decapitated females. That's right, chop off a female fly's head and not much changes really. If anything, it serves to make the fly's behavior more human-like. The males still want to have sex with her, while she in turn treats their sexual advances as noxious foreign stimuli. Number 8. Salamanders. If you're going to come up with a list of animals that stubbornly cling to life even after apparent death, you'll be hard pressed not to include the salamander. This animal has always been tantamount to long life and immortality. It's even revered by people who believe in magic, believing that the amazing regenerative powers of this animal is nothing less than paranormal. Salamanders have the amazing ability to regenerate any part of its body that has been cut off. More amazingly, these regrown parts actually function the same as, or in some cases, even better than the original parts. This is mainly because of a special protein found in salamanders which enables the replication of cells. This protein can also be found in humans but in smaller quantities, and they help us heal from our wounds. So does this mean that we too can soon regenerate severed limbs? Well, we're not quite there yet, but scientists are continuing to study salamanders and how their unique ability can benefit humans in the future. Number 7. Chickens. There is a veracity to the expression, running around like a headless chicken. Yes indeed, just ask any farmer or rancher and they will tell you chickens can still run around with their heads cut off and there is a very simple reason for this. And it's not because chickens are the forebringers of the zombie apocalypse, no. The reason is, believe it or not, human error. A butcher's error to be more specific. You see, a chicken's central nervous system is pulls apart from us humans. Some basic bodily functions are governed not by the brain itself, but by certain parts of the brain stem. So what does this all mean? Well, if a butcher chops a chicken's head too high, most of the time it's just the forebrain of the chicken that comes off with its head, leaving the brain stem and the cerebellum quite untouched. In fact, if the butcher also misses the jugular, not only will the chicken continue to move, it sometimes can still breathe. Of course, it will eventually starve to death, but there are special cases though. Headless Mike, a chicken owned by farmer Lloyd Olson in Fruta, Colorado, actually survived for 18 months without its head. Number 6. Bees. Bees don't live forever, period. Their genes don't hold the key to eternal life, their lives are as fragile as the rest of us. However, there is one specific reason why bees appear on this list, and that's because even though a bee is dead, it still inflicts a ton of pain, and in some cases, even cause fatalities. Not in the way that you would think, of course. Dead bees obviously don't go fly around and actively sting you. It's that their stinging parts, and more importantly, their venom delivery system, will still work even if the bee is long dead. 
When a bee stings, the sting detaches from its body, leaving it embedded into the skin of its victim. Attached to the sting is a tiny organ that both contains bee venom and a tiny muscle that pumps the venom out. Due to the simple physiology of bees, these actions are not controlled by the bee's simple brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. So, if you're thinking that a dead bee is a harmless bee, you better think again. Number 5. The Octopus Thinking about eating live octopus, you better think again. One, it's kinda gross and I guess kinda cruel at the same time, but these guys are so tenacious that even if they are chopped to bits, they could still do a ton of damage. The reason why octopus's arms maintain mobility even after being chopped off is quite fascinating. It's because their central nervous system is quite unique. Most of an octopus's nerve cells, two-thirds of them in fact, can be found not in the brain where you would expect them to be, but rather in its tentacles. And these arms can continue reacting to stimuli even after they're no longer connected to the main brain. In fact, they remain responsive even after the octopus has been long dead and the arm suffered. Researchers in St. George University in London conducted extensive experiments on this phenomenon. After the animals were euthanized, their arms were removed and kept in chilled seawater for up to an hour until they were ready for experimentation. Some arms were suspended vertically, and others were laid out horizontally. When pinched, suspended arms recalled from the unpleasant stimulus by shortening and curling in a corkscrew shape within one second. Horizontal arms also moved away from the undesirable stimuli, many bending in a sort of contrived joint toward the top. These movements can happen for up to a week after the octopus's death. Number 4 frogs. I'm pretty sure you know someone that seems like he's walking around without a brain, but of course that's just figuratively speaking. In the case of frogs, it can be quite literal. It has been discovered that frogs continue to move around even when they're brain dead, or to put it more accurately, with its brain missing. This experiment was brought about when scientists discovered reports of various headless animals continuing to move about. That's very impressive on its own, but let's face it, there's only so much any creature without a head can do. So what happens if you leave the frog's head intact, but take out its brain, you may ask? Well, thanks to the let's chop out its brain and see what the heck happens approach of science taken by 19th century neurologist David Ferrier, we can tell you. A headed but brainless frog actually behaves very similarly to a frog with its gray matter perfectly intact. If you turn it upside down, it will right itself. If you pinch its feet, it will hop away. If you put it in water, it will swim to the side and climb out. And perhaps most disturbing of all, it will even croak contentedly if you stroke its back. The factor that results in frog zombie-like tendencies is the power of the reflex reaction, which fires the necessary electrical impulses that cause a muscle to expand or contract. Number 3. Turtles The hearts of fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals alike have their own pacemaker cells that take over when the signals from the brainstem are not coming through for some reason. This ensures that the heart still functions for a while, even when the brain doesn't. Now the turtle takes the term for a while to a whole new level, and this is because from their heart's viewpoint, being cut off from the oxygen and nutrients usually supplied by the blood is just a normal day at the office. This is mostly because these animals can die for a long time. How long? Well, try 5,000 hours, in the case of the logger-headed musk turtle at least. Yes, who read that right? That was a five followed by three zeros, and they survived that long by what oxygen they can take up from the water via their skin, throat, and butt end, as well as their body's amazing potential for producing energy without oxygen. Their hearts have their own fuel stash, and they just won't give up until every last fill-up of that has been used up. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Have you ever heard of the saying, let sleeping snakes lie? No? Probably because I just made that up. But then again, it's only logical not to touch a snake, awake or otherwise. But did you know this also applies to dead snakes? Number 2. Snakes People's reactions when faced with a highly venomous snake can be boiled down into three things. Running away, freezing on the spot, and oh god, kill it, chop its head off, please! Yes, while indeed chopping the thing's head off may seem the most logical way to avoid getting bitten, the truth is that may not be the case. A snake's head, the vessel for its fangs and deadly poison sacs. In other words, all the dangerous parts still have the ability to bite you and deliver deadly venom, even if it's no longer attached to the rest of its body. The snake has heat-sensitive pits at either side of its face, which it uses to detect threats. And let's face it, if you're close enough for your body heat to be detected, you're close enough to be considered a threat. 
These heat-sensitive pits are capable of detecting a threatening presence for hours after death, which means the snake may continue to defend itself zombie-style. And yes, this applies even if the body is no longer attached. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1. Cockroaches. It shouldn't come as a surprise that these tiny little bugs would make it to this list. Cockroaches are infamous for their tenacity, and are often cited as the most likely survivors of a nuclear war. Some even claim that they can live without their heads. Well, surprise, surprise, they can live without their heads. In fact, they can go on living for weeks. To understand how these bugs can survive decapitation, first we must understand how we fragile humans couldn't. First of all, humans bleed, and when a man's head comes off, he bleeds a lot. Cockroaches don't have that problem, though. They have an open circulatory system, which translates to little to no blood pressure. So, if their head is lopped off, the wound just closes naturally due to clotting. And secondly, and probably obviously, human heads hold quite a bit of important part of our body. Our brain. And without it, humans won't function. Eating, drinking, and breathing are all impossible without the head. Cockroaches, on the other hand, don't need their heads to breathe, as they do this process through little holes located on their body called spiracles. Although a headless cockroach will die of starvation eventually, it will take weeks for them to do so. Do we leave any zombie animals out? Let us know in the comment section down below. Want to watch more videos about amazing animals? Click on any of the videos you see on your screen. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.